Welcome to the Coach's Corner. Coach Clarence is an entrepreneur, financial expert, and passionate about helping people build and market their business. He has a creative flair for thinking outside the box and is always looking for the positive side of life. Now, here's Coach Clarence. Welcome to another episode of Fit Over 40. I'm the host, Coach Clarence. Um, I wanted to talk today a little bit about grief. Uh, I realized that most of us, when we get past a certain age, we tend to deal with death, losing loved ones, lo- losing people we love. It could be losing a relationship. It could be losing a job that you really put a lot of time and effort into and it just got pulled from. So I want to talk a little bit about that because this is fit over 40. And generally when you get past 40, and in my case, 50, a lot of people that you love and grew up with are going to start transitioning on. And I want to talk about grief and talk about how important grief is. And it's not something to be ashamed with. Everybody deals with grief differently. You get a lot of people who say, oh, look at them. They're all over the place. They are showing out they are doing too much and it's no ice place to decide how someone griefs that's a personal thing that's an individual thing and um, people should be allowed to have their moment obviously now obviously there's a period of time where if this behavior continues and it keeps going and it gets to be destructive then you definitely want to maybe come in as a friend and say hey you know, that was a while ago, you know, you're still doing some things that it might be transitioning from grief into something else. And, you know, that's when you being that good friend comes in and you might want to, you know, offer some assistance, if you will. So, all right, let's get started. Like I said, this is going to be about grief. Um, No script here. I have notes. I'm just going to tell you some things. Um, Me losing a very good friend of mine, close friend of mine. I wanted to just talk off the cuff, but I also wanted to do a little research. And the research that I found in general, and again, these aren't my thoughts. These are some things that are in general, but they do relate. And I'm just going to speak a little bit to each one of them. There's around seven phases of grief that people go through when they lose a loved one. So I'm going to talk a little bit about those phases, okay? Because again, we all go through them and it's good to know that they exist so that when they, you're going through it, it doesn't freak you out, if you will. And it's completely fine with being grieving a loved one. You know, that's just a normal part of life. So I want to talk a little bit about that. So we'll get into that a little bit. And, you know, when I'm by myself, I usually want to get to the point, make a few points, hit my notes, hit the points that I need you to know, and then get out. You know, so you're not bored. When I have a guest, I want to use all that time to let that guest shine and let them be the person that they are. Okay. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, If anything I say resonates with you and you want to hear more of this type of content, by all means, you know, reach out and say, hey, I want more of that kind of stuff or, hey, that really hit home. Let me know whatever your thoughts are. I want to know what your thoughts are. Um, because again, like I said, this is something that affects all of us. So once again, I'm coach Clarence is fit over 40. We do weekly podcasts, usually Tuesday and Thursday about all things fitness. We also do mindset as I'm an online coach, fitness mindset. I talk about things like credit repair, different types of mortgages, all falls into that triangle on one side of it. You have your fitness. One side of it is your Uh, finances and then the bottom is mindset and that's what my show comprises of if you are watching this on YouTube do me a favor hit that subscribe button so you get notices when these videos drop hit the like button for the algorithm that helps me out that helps us keep the show going keeps new ideas and people wanting to come on and speak to you we're gonna always try to bring you positive guests all right so let's talk about the seven most common things I found in grief or when you're dealing with the loss of someone or the loss of a relationship, the loss of a pet for some folks, you know, there's different kinds of things. 
And the first thing, which is the most common, is shock. Like when I got the news about my friend, I was in shock. I was like, what? I was um, awoken up from a text from his sister, and she explained to me what she knew at the time happened. And I was like, what? It's not happening. I literally just talked to him yesterday. And shock is the first thing because you, you have this strong relationship with someone and you don't want to believe that it's actually happening, but it is. You you don't want to go, why is this happening? Why is this, you know, this is some I love. This can't be true. This is, maybe I'm going to wake up, go back to sleep, and this is not really happening. Okay? So shock is the first one. So it's normal to be shocked. It's normal to be like, why is this happening? You know? It is okay to be in that phase. It is okay to express that. And that's usually what you're expressing first. You know, you're looking for details. You're looking for more information. You're looking for how to explain what is happening. And that's the shock phase. And then, as I alluded to a little bit in the shock phase, is denial. You're in denial that it's happening. I was in denial. The phase I was in was, this isn't happening. Now, this person that I'm referring to, my friend, he was um, alive for a while, if you will. Uh, he was in a coma, medically inducing coma, to keep him going to see if they were, could find a way to get him to come out of that, if he would recover. So the denial was that, oh, he'll be fine. He always pulls through. He, you know, he, he'll bounce back. He'll He'll get through it. He'll be perfect. You know, this is just not really happening. I know I'm going to get a phone call and they're going to say, oh man, he's fine. Don't worry about it. He'll be, he'll be great. You know, that's that denial, you know, and you go through a lot of feelings during that denial phase. Um, and I'll get to that next, but the denial, losing a job, I've worked there for years and they are pulling it from me. How about a relationship? You lose someone that you love. Maybe not even death. Maybe they just decide they didn't want to be with you anymore and they left you. That is the denial phase that you go through. It's not happening. It's not really happening. So you're really pushing back on what's really happening and you haven't accepted it yet. You know, so there's that part of that grieving phase of denial. It could be met with a lot of emotion, sadness, anger. Maybe you want to point fingers at someone. There's a lot of things in that phase. So a good time to realize what's happening and take notes guys when I'm talking about these phases and write down. And if you've lost someone and you relate to any one of these uh, emotions that you have during that time, please let me know. Let me know what you felt. I've so far felt the first two shock denial. Is this really happening? Why is this really happening? All right. Third one, which I felt too, is anger. Maybe you're angry at the person who they're with. Maybe you're angry with the people they were with when this happened. Now you start doing the blame game. You're angry. Why is this happening? Why is this? How could this be avoided? What could have been said? Why did this person say that? And it's that anger part. And that anger, you got to be careful. You might say something to somebody you care about in that moment of being emotionally charged up and say something that really might ruin a reputation, uh, not a reputation, a uh, relationship, excuse me. So we want to watch what we want to say when we get angry. One of the biggest things we can do is control our emotion. I had conversations with family. We were close friends of both of ours. And we expressed anger. We were going through these emotions. Everything I'm saying, like it was happening in real time. And there was anger brought up. Because when you lose someone you love, you do get angry. You want to blame somebody. Why did this happen? Who's the responsible party here? Be careful in that anger phase because that's when you burn down bridges, burn relationships. And it's hard. Trust me. Again, I'm number three, I'm right there. Anger. Angry at what's happening. Angry that this happened to my friend. Why is my friend? Why couldn't it be somebody else? All these things you say. And if it's about a spouse, and maybe the spouse or a husband or wife is on one side of the family, you're on the other side of the family, you start going, well, why couldn't it be her? And she had something to do with it. Or he had something to do with it. And then you're going through those things. And now you're not honoring the person who's passed. It becomes starts to becoming about you and how you feel. I noticed that too. It, I'm like, wait a minute. This is supposed to be about him. Why am I getting so wrapped up into why is this causing me problems? 
again, that anger phase. And again, I'm not a psychologist. I'm just a human like you. I've dealt with people who've lost. I've seen a lot of lost life. So these are things I can just talk about and I can relate to my notes when I was researching what I was going to talk about. Um, so that's it. That's my background and grief. I've lost a lot of people. I've seen a lot of people, you know, lose their life. Um, some shorter, some should have, I was like, that was too quick. They're too good. Why, why did that happen? Other people in old age, if you will, normal. You know, you know, they're sick or, you know, they're dealing with an issue and you, you start to mentally prepare for it, you know, so different thing. All right. Let's talk about um, the fourth one. And that is called bargaining. OK, you start having these feelings and I'm reading my notes. Pardon me here because I want to make sure I cover the right points. Um, you start having feelings of guilt, um, shame or blame. And that kind of ties into that anger thing. Guilt. In my case, I'm not going to get into how he ended up passing away, but we did talk about what he did prior to that, and I expressed concern. So I start feeling guilty. Like, could I have said more? What could I have done differently to maybe persuade him to do something else? As a person who coaches people, there were a lot of conversations that me and him had where I could tell he was reaching out for advice. And we had a relationship like that. We would call each other. We would talk about different things. We would talk about how we were feeling. Yes, as men, we talk about how we feel, which is one of the reasons I miss him even now, because I would ask him, hey, man, how do I deal with this? What do you need me to do? And I can't communicate with him. So I'm using the universe to guide me. And maybe that guidance will come from him from someplace. I know he's watching. He's probably going to be listening to this wherever he is, probably, you know, saying something slick. That's who he is. Um, but bargaining is com it's comic to wonder and say, I should have done this or if I would have done that. And you're bargaining with yourself about how you should have handled that situation or how you could have possibly avoided. And sometimes we can't avoid things. You know, if, if you go get in your car and you got to go to work or tomorrow you got to get in your car and go to work and you get an accident, there, what could you have done? You know, things happen, you know. There are things that we – now, if you go bungee jumping, you you die – you made a choice. Now I might have been a friend that said, I ain't doing that. You shouldn't do that. And then maybe that's that bargaining where I'm going, see, I told you, you shouldn't have did that. That's not great. It's not smart. Um, so again, these are those feelings that I had, the bargaining, the anger, the shock, you know, denial, all normal stages of grieving. So what, what is the point of me walking you through these things? Each one of us listening to this is going to lose someone that we care about. So it's on us to recognize these stages and learn to move differently. Now, obviously, I'm, again, I'm not an expert on this. If you are grieving and struggling, you could probably seek professional counseling so that you can deal with it. Honestly, I have dealt with so much death. Each one hits different depending on the level of the person that is. Sometimes you're like, yeah, I, you know, that person was living a kind of lifestyle that that could happen. Or sometimes it's, you know, that person was great. You know, I'm doing air quotes, live the quote unquote perfect life. So you're shocked. Why is that happening? That happens, you know, again, bargaining. Why is that happening? Um, then there is the next phase, which is depression. Some mild depression obviously kicks in some major depression, depending on who it is. If it's a spouse. What am I going to do? He was all, he was my everything. Who am I going to talk to? Who am I going to turn to? I got to start over. Some people, that's a real challenge. In my case, this was a friend, a business partner. There's a lot of things. It's, man, we had these plans. Can we still do them? He's a big part of it. For some folks, depression takes over. I'll be honest. There was a couple days where I just sat there and going through all those phases on a repeated loop of, how do I deal with this? Why is this happening? Why is it happening to me? Why is it happening to his wife? All these why's, why is it happening to our group, our business associates? All these things came into play. And this is part of the depression that sets in. You start overthinking. You start thinking about FOMO, fear of missing out. What am I going to do without him? And um, hopefully at the end of this, I'm going to bring some things that you can do when you're grieving and how maybe you can turn grieving into something positive. So that's why I want to do this show. This is an odd subject, but this is something that I know most people have dealt with. I mean, just last year, so many people told me about losing somebody. So this I thought was a good subject. Okay. 
And here's one that's a, I found interesting of the things that these are the seven most common things people go to. And this one's called testing. Okay. Let me just kind of read my notes. The testing stage of the grieving process often involves trying to figure out different things that will help you move forward. Okay. That's pretty interesting. And it's kind of what I'm saying. Like, what do you do when you've lost someone and there's nothing you can do if they pass there's transition and now I got to move on, you know, depending on what that relationship is like and where do I expect it to go? So, um, in this stage, you're starting to build a new normal after losing someone. So in my case, the businesses we started deciding, do I, am I still able to do them? The relationships we built, do I have to keep those new friends we've met, um, the lessons we learned, um, relationship with his spouse, all these things you're going through your head. This is the testing phase. You're testing out a new life without this person. That's the testing phase. How do I deal with this loss and the fact that this person is gone now? How do I do that? Okay. Becomes very critical in this stage. You know, there are a lot of different things you can do to move out of this phase of testing and seeing how things are going to go, seeing how things are going to be. You know, my thing is, you know, social media is always popping up a reminder of something. You think about that time and it's like, man, that's all gone. So that's testing and all these concepts, you can write them down and then go Google them yourself and see what that means. Like testing and grief. What does that mean? All right. And the last one is acceptance. You accept the fact that that person is gone. You accept the fact that you have to now move on. You accept the fact that this person is not going to be around. You accept the fact that I have to be strong. They would have wanted me to be strong. I now have to move with the idea this person is no longer with me. I have to accept the fact that there is going to be change. And the acceptance phase does not mean you stop grieving. It just means you've come to a point where you've accepted it. You know that it's a real thing and you know that there's nothing you can do about it. It's just what it is. Now, I'm going to kind of go through a couple things. I jotted down which each of these categories of the seven briefly, just some ways you can deal with each phase to help you move forward. Um, let's talk about obviously shop. Okay. Shop. There's numbness and people kept asking me, how you doing Clarence? How do you feel? And I would say numb. And it was because it really hadn't processed for me. And, and then quite honestly, it took me a couple days. Um, I believe it was Saturday that it hit me really. And the numbness turned into it settled in. There was more emotions. Um, numbness, self, these are protection mechanisms that your body has you do protect you from your self sabotage and doing damaging things like going out and doing something crazy. That's not going to help you. Okay. Use these things as buffers, as you manage these emotions, you know, as you think through and you listen to this again and listen to it again and go. Oh, I see myself right where there where he's talking about. Now you know, and you don't feel weird because a lot of times when you're grieving, there are a lot of emotions in your head. Some make sense, some don't. And if you can recognize them, then you're you're doing better. You're better off. All right, so let's talk about denial. Okay, denial affects you in a lot of different ways. Denial is kind of like your emotions. Your body's trying to again protect you. Hey, that's not really happening. You know, you start to fight things. You start to go well. It's okay to lose some. It's it's okay to validate that loss. It doesn't, it changes you, but it doesn't change you. Your goals still have to move forward. And by acknowledging and validating and not getting out of that denial phase as soon as possible allows your healing process to begin. And again, just because you started to heal doesn't mean the memories of that person have stopped. It simply means that you've decided, okay, I'm processed this, I'm going to move on. And again, you may never, you know, that person's birthday or anniversary, or if you're on social media, a picture may pop up as a memory and you're going to remember that. And maybe those feelings come back up. Anger, when you're feeling anger, have that moment, but make sure you 
isolate yourself. Don't be quick to respond to things you see, or if you see things, how people are responding on social media, maybe they make a comment, maybe somebody makes a really shitty comment, like maybe they say something, he deserved it or she deserved it. You can't get into that. People feel the way they feel about somebody, good or bad. Most people give you their, oh man, it shouldn't happen to him, da, da, da. But there's those people who are just happy to see that you're gone. That's just what it is. Just like when I go, there are going to be people who be sad, maybe. People be happy, maybe. You know, that's just, you can't worry about those things. Like you're always going to have a hater who has something to say. So when you're in the anger phase, recognize that you're angry. Recognize that it's not your fault. Um, and if it is your fault, maybe you did something that person with you and they killed, that's, you need to get counseling. You need to go to someone who can professionally help you get through that because what you don't want to do is because of that, you go out and do something even stupider and then you create another loss. The best thing you can do is grieve properly, grieve with guidance, and then go, I'm not going to do that anymore. You know, that was a horrible loss lesson. What can I do to make sure other people don't go through this. You could actually become a great advocate for not doing whatever you did to cause that law. You know, learn to work through that. Don't get angry. Don't go, oh, I'm going to go drink until I, I pass out or I'm going to go get in my car and drive and do something because you're going to end up hurting somebody else, mainly you. Okay. All right. We talked about the bargaining. What can I have done different? What can I have done? You can what if yourself to death. The best thing to do is go, it is what it is. This is what happened. Here's the best way to navigate through it and talk to your friends. All my buddies, we all talked to each other. We were able to give each other advice. Some of it was spiritual. Some of it was what would he want us to do? And you work through all those emotions together. And what the best thing I learned through this situation, because this was a really personal one and it involved other people, so many people that we knew, it was that I was able to hear other people saying the same thing and feeling the same thing. So I didn't feel isolated. I didn't feel like I was going through this alone. And that was super important for me. And it will be continually. We all said, Hey, let's stay in touch. If you need to talk, all the men, I was really proud said, if you need to talk, if you need to express yourself, you know, don't feel weird. Make sure you call, make sure you tell me how you're feeling. That was super important. Okay. Depression. As I've said many times on this show, I have dealt with depression over the years. Depression is something that you can live with, but the best way to deal with depression is to learn the signs of it and how you work through that. And I'm not a professional in that point. I can give you tips that I use when I felt those ways because I've had a lot of things that were horrible happen. I've slid down or I wasn't performing the way I felt I knew I could perform. Then I recognized where I was at and I came, came up with things to work myself out of it. I have a lot of people that I can refer you if you feel like you are depressed. You know, there are, you can Google signs of depression. Really depression for me is you are sinking into one of these feelings that I've talked about, one of the seven, and you're staying stuck in one of them. Depression manifests in a lot of different ways. I could talk about that with coaching. You might be eating certain foods, even though you know it's bad for you, but it's giving you some quick feeling of satisfaction. Depression could be being in a bad relationship, even though you know it's bad. It could be doing something that's harming you and you know it. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to, to analyze it, but you have to recognize that you're depressed and work yourself through that or get help or reach out to a friend, reach out to somebody you feel comfortable with and you can trust and you can be vulnerable with. Hopefully you're, if you have married or you have a boyfriend, you can reach out to them and you can express how you're feeling. You can make yourself feel good. You can talk to my, you can spread. I'm very fortunate that I could call the guys that I associate with and we were able to talk as men and express how we felt. And there was no shame. There was no judgment if we felt a certain way. And that's how you can break depression in terms of this stuff, okay? Again, make sure if you are feeling like you're gonna hurt yourself that you get help. It is okay to say, hey man, I need help. Call a friend and go, hey, I need to talk. I'm not doing good. I'm not processing this very well. Have that conversation so you don't hurt yourself again. We don't want to continue the loss, okay? Little thought on that. And then I talked about testing. What is the best way of testing? I actually think this is a great phase because you're ex you're acknowledging that this loss happened. You're now testing ideas. What about this? And what if I could do something different? Um, how I move forward. If it's a relationship, 
I'm not saying you're thinking, oh, I'm going to find somebody else, but how am I going to live without this person? I'm a big proponent, and a lot of women who have dated me think it's weird, but I talk about if we're together and one of us passed, how will we navigate that? I think that's important as adults to talk about that. Who would you want to benefit from whatever you have amassed? Who do you want to handle? I think those are normal conversations that you should have. So part of that testing phase, you're testing out how to move forward, is by having conversations with your spouse, people you trust. I've had these conversations and it's important to know, make sure you have a living will so that if you're in a situation that people aren't fighting amongst you, how to deal with a situation, how are you going to pass? If, do you want to be resuscitated? All these things are normal things to have, you know, and then that testing phase, you are just asking questions because you're going to experience new feelings when you lose someone. All right. And the last one, acceptance, obviously pretty simple. You've accepted it. Think of that person, hold them in memory. What we're doing is honoring the memories, the good times. There are so many years of good times, good memories, honoring what they stood for, honoring them by being the best version of yourself so that when your time comes and it's your turn, that will be the memory. That is my thoughts on ways to grieve if you are dealing with a loss. Um, again, thank you everybody who's reached out to me. Losing someone that you really care about is never easy. Don't be ashamed of your emotions. Just watch and make sure those emotions aren't destructive. Emotions are guide rails through your journey. Watch the destructive ones. Rewind this, or I should I say rewind, I'm dating myself. <laughs> Play this video back and listen to the points. Again, I'm not an expert. These are just some little quick points. I'm not going to bore you to death. But think about those things. I literally experienced all those things and it's only been less than a week. They happen. You know, I'm a nerd. I Google things. What happens when people lose one and all these things popped up? These were the top seven that kept popping up. There's more than that. You can go down a rabbit hole on this stuff. But the main thing is, folks, there's always a support system. Um, don't go down a rabbit hole that you never can come back from. It is normal to grieve. It is normal to suffer um, feelings when you lose someone. That is the point of this. And as we get older, and I thought it would be a great little topic to talk about on Fit Over 40, because over 40, this happens more common than not. Now, obviously, young people pass away. Obviously, we all probably have some experience of losing someone when we were younger, but when you now are older, you have kids, you're navigating career, navigating relationships, this is important stuff to talk about. So, all right, folks, again, if you watch this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, make a comment. Tell me how you dealt with somebody passing. Send me a note. Make sure you follow us on social media, Fit Over 40 with Coach Clarence. You can also follow me on Instagram at Coach Clarence One. Also, Clarence M. Ferguson. And if you're on Facebook, you can join my group, Fit Over 40 with Coach Clarence. Uh, YouTube channel is Coach Clarence TV, which you're watching. All right, guys, thank you for your support. Thanks for supporting our channel. Thanks for supporting our podcast. Love you. We'll see you next time.